Hey guys, Byron Lambert here back at it. The final day of joint training camp practices between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Miami Dolphins. This practice actually puts a wrap on the 2019 rosterwatch.com training camp tour. And listen, we want to extend all of our gratitude to the pro subscribers at rosterwatch.com who make this possible every year. It's always our mission to be on the front lines of your fantasy teams and to give back more every single season. And again, we, we couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you very, very much. You know, once again, it was another rainy uh, day here in Tampa that was the lightning sirens went off and practice was moved indoors. Uh, but with the fantastic media policy here in Tampa Bay, we were able to take in a whole lot again today at practice. And, you know, I, the first thing I took away today is that it was Josh Rosen who was getting more run with the ones on the dolphin side of the ball. Certainly it was Josh Rosen and Kalen Balage toting the rock, carrying the load today with Kenyon Drake uh, sidelined. Balage looks to continue to seize this opportunity as the lead back in Miami. And you guys know this is something we've been telling you about all season. We're not surprised at all by any of this. It's really happening. Kalen Balage is the real deal. He's showing power, explosive ability. Uh, real prowess around the goal line. He, no question, he is the Dolphins' best running back. A cup, another blip on the pass catching radar, though. Uh, you know, fortunately, Balage is being used in a three down role and capacity with the Dolphins, which is you know the primary source of all of our fantasy upside and value. And you know, when it comes to the running back position, is that three down capability. So the good news is they are utilizing him like that. Everybody thinks that Kalen Balaj can play on all three downs. He showed great uh, prowess again today in pass protection. But another bad drop, another really, really bad drop on a routine route out of the backfield that he's got to catch if he's going to lock down this role. You know, again, everybody graded Balaj as a player who could catch the football coming out of college. We saw it at the Senior Bowl. Apparently the Dolphins think the same thing because – even in lieu of the drops, you know, granted, they didn't have much choice with Drake out today. It's been all Mark Walton behind Balage. Uh, he, he can't make these drops, but, you know, fortunately, based on what we know about him, this shouldn't be a chronic problem, something to watch out for. I will say, though, at this point, I want, after I leave this training camp, I want Kalen Balage in a vacuum far more than I want a Ronald Jones, who looks like he's in a full blown timeshare with Peyton Barber. It's hard to tell one from the other in terms of when it comes to the lead in this backfield. Rojo looks like the player that's got a little more juice in the open field. He's certainly improved his hands as a pass catcher, but Peyton Barber, far superior in pass protection today, which is going to be key to who earns the snap counts. And then Barber also showed much better around the goal line today. And so if he ends up getting the goal line carries or the majority of them or is just more effective down in the red zone, for the Bucks, that's obviously going to play into his value. And this matters so much because it's clearly a 1A, 1B situation with neither guy blowing your doors off. And you got to take Ronald Jones like eight rounds or five rounds before you have to take Peyton Barber. There's no way that disparity should exist. So I think if you follow ration here, rationale here, you're going to have to get Ronald Jones down on your draft boards, get Peyton Barber up at value basically for free or close to free at the end of your drafts would be the logical play here. And then, you know, same story as yesterday. Mike Evans continues to look like the absolute best player on the entire football field today. He's an absolute monster, uh, representing a lot of value at the end of second round in our drafts. And he had a 1,500-yard, eight-touchdown season last year. You know, I would certainly chalk him up for another 13, 1,400. You know, real solid likelihood of going double-digit touchdowns this season. So if you liked what you got out of Mike Evans last year, all systems appear to be go uh, for this season. And then maybe a guy we didn't see as much of yesterday that really started to rear his head, especially in the end zone, was tight end O.J. Howard. A lot of mouths to feed here. So, you know, we don't usually buy into uh, a tight end strategy early in our drafts. He's certainly one of the guys you could make a case for at, you know, relative value more in the middle rounds rather than coming off the board early with maybe somebody like a Zach Ertz or a George Kittle. You do get a little bit concerned about the number of mouths to feed around here, but this this does look like a high-flying Bruce Arians offense, and O.J. Howard really showed off today, especially in the red zone. So if he's able, I know Jameis went out of his way to tell us that every year O.J. Howard has scored more touchdowns. So if that trend continues, uh, 
that's good news for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Guys, for more analysis from the fantasy football perspective of every single stop on the 2019 rosterwatch.com training camp tour, follow us at rosterwatch.com. Also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, the Roster Watch podcast, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at rosterwatch. Once again, guys, thank you so much to all of our followers, subscribers on Twitter, uh, over on SiriusXM Radio, and right here on Instagram for keeping up along with us this year and subscribing to the website. You're the ones who make all of this possible. And for an expert quality draft guaranteed, rosterwatch.com.